faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. It's Superman! Rocketed as a boy from the exploding planet Krypton, he grew to manhood here on Earth, whose yellow sun and lighter gravity gave him fantastic superpowers. In the city of Metropolis, unknown to anyone, he poses as mild-mannered television and newspaper newsman Clark Kent, but battles evil all over Earth and beyond as Superman. Superman and the Neutron Nightmare. Our story begins a year ago at a nuclear reactor in Metropolis. Three villains, intent on crime, enter, carrying hidden weapons. One has used a grenade to help his evil aims. Minutes of chaos follow. Alarms send everyone into a flurry of action. Instantly, more than 50 buttons are pressed, and the nuclear reactor shuts down. But the damage has already been done. The core is shattered. Hydrogen's forming inside the reactor. There's a gas bubble blocking the water flow. Look up there. It's Superman. We're saved. It's too late. Half the nuclear fuel rods have been destroyed. Help us, Superman. Don't worry. I have a makeshift coolant of my own. A frigid cold blast of super breath. These reactors keep producing more and more heat. And if the hydrogen bubbles explode, Metropolis will be radioactively contaminated for years. We're hey, saved! We're saved! We're saved! It's all over! Not quite, friend. Those two guys up there started the catastrophe, and they're the ones I want. I recognize them. Ted and Tim, two of the TNT trio. after us. Run faster! Across this path of ice. He's blowing me across the ice. Help! I can't stop sliding! Ah! Now, tell me why you're here. No way, Superman. We talk. Come on! Take us to prison, Superman! Those sirens! You! Everything! It's driving me crazy! Where's Nat, the middle member of your trio? We came here by ourselves, just the two of us. Yeah, yeah, Superman, just the two of us. Okay, could be. My x-ray vision isn't picking up anyone else. Right, fellas, next stop, prison. Meanwhile, trapped under a sheet of lead thrown over by the explosion, Nat, the third member of the trio, was trying to attract attention to himself. Can't you hear me? Can't you see me? Yeah, blast it, Superman! Save me! This lead sheet shielding its truck ate me! Ow! You can't hear me over this crack. Ah, you can't see me through lead! Oh, gotta save myself now! Gotta free myself! Oh, the pain! Uh, I'm being crushed! <laughs> I'm not gonna die. I'm not gonna die. They're not gonna kill Nat Tryon. They did this to me. Superman should have saved me. Tim and Ted should have told him I was here. This radioactivity is burning my flesh. I'm free. They're gonna pay. They'll all pay! They'll pay! And despite all the guards and the search of the nuclear plant, Nat Tryon staggers to safety, his body racked with pain and completely contaminated by massive radiation. He finds his body fully changed by a magnetic strength from nature. He is a living neutron bomb. more ready to avenge and destroy. Ted, Tim, even Superman will all pay for what I've become. Vengeance! 
Time passes by, and Superman carries on with his career as Clark Kent, GBS television link man. A few months later, the studio's sports reporter is taken sick, and Clark is sent in his place to cover a wrestling event taking place in the city of Metropolis. A heavyweight contest, and in the blue corner, an old favorite with us all here, our local champion, a big cheer, please, for the Golden Locket! And into the ring steps a six-foot sunburnt giant mass of muscle, young and handsome with golden hair. He is obviously a favorite with the wrestling crowd. And coming to the ring now, into the red corner, his opponent for tonight, a newcomer to us all here. This is his first fight in Metropolis, so give a big welcome to the Masked Neutron. A smaller man comes into the arena. A green mask completely covering his face, his eyes peering through the slits. Sharp, cold, spiky, frightening eyes. They fix on his golden-haired opponent in the opposite corner and then flash around the press seats at the ringside. Superman is puzzled. There's something familiar about those eyes and that man, but I can't place it. He doesn't recognize me as Clark Kent, so I might be mistaken. Anyway, the fight is about to start. Well. The two wrestlers approach each other in the ring. The golden locket immediately tries a neck lock on his masked opponent, but fails to make any impression. He releases him and steps back to try another grip. Superman has an uneasy feeling. There's something wrong somewhere. That golden locket lad should win easily. He looks so fit and strong compared with the mass neutron. But there's something I don't understand. By Ryan! Now he's hit the masked man hard too, but he can't move him. Superman is right. The golden locket boy makes no impression on his opponent, who just stands and takes everything that is thrown at him. He is immovable. And then... With one hand, he holds the six-foot golden locket over his head and throws him into the crowd. The referee goes to remonstrate to the masked man, but he too is picked up and thrown far into the arena. The wrestler is alone in the ring now, and he is carrying the posts from the inside. And he's snapping the ropes as if they were made of gossamer thread. Superman is anxious. I shall have to do something about this if it doesn't stop. And I can't change from Clark Kent to Superman here at ringside. I'll give him two more seconds and then... Oh, no, he's stopped. He's holding his hands above his head. You have cause to remember the Neutron Man again, my friends, before long. Remember that I shall return to Metropolis. Oh, yes. I shall be back later. And before anyone can move, the masked man leaves the ring and disappears. As medical attention is given to the injured referee and the golden-haired wrestler, the crowd wonders at this strange event. <clears throat> Superman, in his ringside seat, writes up his notes, ready for his broadcast as Clark Kent. Honey, something's coming back to me. I'm sure that that was Nat Tryon. A guy we thought was killed on the roof of the reactor. And Superman's hunch is right. It is Nat Tryon. As the months have gone by, he has had a growing power within him. More months go by. And then one night after a year of festering hatred, an anniversary of another sort is about to take place. It is the Daily Planet's 150th year in business. And to mark the event, it has been decided by the publisher that the great 50-ton steel globe which used to stand poised over the building and was removed when the TV station came in should be put back to its original position. It's a great idea, Mr. Edge. Everyone will see it as a beacon of truth, a shining light. Yes, Lois, the planet circulation has been tipping lately. This will be a good publicity stunt. What do you say, Ken? Uh, maybe we should have some sort of celebration to go with it. Yahoo! You know, maybe uh, get Superman, the mayor. As usual, Kent, you think small. Forget the mayor, we'll go right for the state governor. Yes, yes, I can see it. 
Superman, the state governor, and me. I like it. I like it. I'll go phone the governor now. What do you know, Clark? The Daily Planet Globe is coming back. Isn't that great? Well, I, for one, never really missed it. That's you, all right, Clark Kent. The brightest spot in your life is the day you wash your socks. <laughs> Did you hear that, everyone? Clark didn't miss the globe! And now we move to Metropolis Prison. A somber, steel-clad reminder that not everyone obeys the law. A case in point is not trying outside the wall. And then... This is that crap where that big tent is being kept. It's a crack too, where I would have been placed if they had caught me. But they didn't catch me. Instead of being a common jailbird, I'd become a power! A power! A power seeking vengeance against those who betrayed me. That first tent... He's in there somewhere, rotten, waiting to come outside again. But he will never come outside. I, the Neutron Man, will stop him. First this puny prison wall will go. I'm here to destroy you, Teddy. Revenge is at hand. What the blazes? Look over there. The walls come crashing in. Yeah, and what's that and all that dust coming this way? It's a man. He crashed through the wall. It's impossible. Hey, you! Get him! Get him! I've been shooting at him with everything I've got, but nothing's happening. Me too. I've emptied everything I've got at the guy. He's still coming on. Who is he? Am I going crazy or something? Someone tell the governor, quick! Keep shooting at him! Keep firing! I am, I tell you, but I can't hit him! Idiot Scrooge, your bullets melt before they even reach me. Now out of my way, the Neutron Human Bomb needs to kill! Where are you, Teddy? Answer me! I've come to return a favor! Where are you, Teddy boy? Ah, there you are, my one-time friend. Are you pleased to see me, the man you left to die? Well... I for an eye, I always say. That voice? Nat? It can't be you. But it is, my friend. Or would you rather not recall that it was your grenade that sent that lead shield crashing down on top of me? You knew I was trapped there. Damn it, you left me to die. Or so you thought. For heaven's sake, Nat. Don't. Don't. I didn't mean it. I swear. Yeah, forget the apologies. They won't work. Nothing can save you now. Superman! I don't have to look twice to see you're the one-man prison wrecking crew that I was summoned to stop. Yes, Superman, and what an unexpected pleasure to see you. After I finished with Ted and Tim, I was coming for you. But seeing that you're here, why waste time? Ooh. What the... I've been changed, Superman. I'm a walking neutron bomb. And now what I want, I get. And I want death. He can't hurt me. I'm ready for him. Great, Rio. He's making the prison tumble down. I can't let a single light be lost. I must melt the falling stones. Superman's making the stones fall like harmless air. Superman's melting the stones. Superman, that was the most sensational save I ever... Sure, Warder, but Neutron escaped. Now, how about the convict he was about to kill? Warden, it's Ted Gray. He's dead. It's like a bomb blew out his cell with him in it. Then I failed. A life was lost. Neutron did what he set out to do, but he won't succeed again. I swear. Superman, where are you going? But Superman is setting off towards the far side of the city, and a quick X-ray scan gives him the address where Tim Moore, that other member of the trio, now on parole from jail, is living. Superman knows that the Neutron will try to kill Tim in the same way he had killed Ted. He located Tim in a small apartment, but a different Tim Moore to the one he had arrested at the nuclear plant. And it was strange, Superman. When I was in prison, I read the Bible first for laughs. But then I seem to really understand. 
It changed me and made me despise my former self. Well, it's good to see you, Tim. And alive. Superman, I owe you an awful lot. You stopped me before I went too far. Before someone could be hurt because of my stupidity. And if there is ever anything I can do for you... There is, Tim. Something of vital importance. Anything, Superman. I want you to lend me your apartment for the night. Go and stay the night with friends and allow me to stay here in your place. And I want to borrow your clothes to wear. Yeah, but... Off you go and leave me here. Okay, Superman. Anything you ask. And thanks again. And Superman, dressed as Tim, settles down to a quiet evening in the apartment watching TV. And GBS chairman Morgan Edge has announced that the state governor and mayor will attend next week's 150th anniversary gala when Superman will unveil the new Daily Planet globe. 10,000 watt Daily Planet letters will circle the new globe every 24 hours. The news drones on. Superman relaxes when... What the... Oh, there, Timmy. Long time no see, pal of mine. Matt. Yeah, it's taken a while, Tim, old chum. But now I have you, and there is no escape. Don't be so certain of that, Neutron. Things aren't always the way they seem. Superman! But how? Never mind. What did you do with Tim Moore? Tim is safe, away from where you can hurt him. So why not give up the aggravation? Since you know you can't kill me. I don't know anything of that kind, Superman. I can kill you. And when I find Tim, he'll die as well. You are making me annoyed, Neutron. You have gained ideas above the capability of your intelligence. You cannot cope with the power you have within you. I shall have to teach you a lesson in good manners. Ah, Superman! You know full well that that blow you struck against me would have fell a normal being. It did little harm to me. And as each moment passes, I gain in power. I repeat, I shall finish you, Superman. You will become as nothing, just a memory. A Superman who failed. Oh, yes. Never fear, you will die. You will die. Ah, you're still alive, Superman. But there's enough power in these fists to level a city. You may stagger me, Neutron, even knock me off balance, but destroy me, never. I will, Superman, I swear I will. No, Neutron, you can't bully me like you did those people in the wrestling ring. They were easy for you. I am a different challenge. Don't fear, Superman. I tell you, I shall kill you. You're strong, Neutron, I'll give you that. And the longer our fight continues, the more likely some innocent bystander will be hurt. That means I've got to finish this off fast. It's only a matter of time, Superman. Only a matter of the exact moment my power surpasses yours. Maybe I'm not quite ready yet. Maybe my powers must increase a thousandfold. But they will, Superman. And when they do, you'll be nothing more than a child's memory. And with just one almighty blow, the Neutron Man brings rows of derelict buildings crashing down on top of Superman. But now, only a round of our fight is over. I'll find Tim Moore, destroy him, and then I'll come back and rid the world of you as well. But first of all, Superman, another small demonstration of why Neutron will never be beaten. All my power was in that last punch, but I can see I only stunned you. But someday, someday soon,
that same night, back in his domain, Nat Tryon, now the Neutron Man, sees the face of Clark Kent on his TV screen. That same Clark Kent, who in his secret life is Superman himself. And now, over to Lana Lang with the latest regional news. The Daily Planet's 150th anniversary continues to grow. Besides the state governor, the mayor, and Superman, celebrities of the theater and sports world will appear, each of whom will contribute $5,000 towards the Daily Planet Fresh Air Fund for needy children. And at the end, Superman himself will unveil the new 50-ton steel globe. Surely tomorrow night will be a night to remember. And now, more good news for the citizens of Metropolis. That's it. That's it! I can't kill Superman. But I can shatter him mentally. Tomorrow night, Superman will destroy Metropolis. <laughs> the following night, on the roof of the Galaxy Daily Globe building, a party is taking place. This is incredible, Clark. Everybody's here. Well, when our boss, Morgan Edge, throws a party, they're only the best. Ah, there's the governor's helicopter. Only urgent business would have kept him so late. He's here now, though. <laughs> Morgan Edge is enjoying it all. Will somebody be introducing me to the governor? I'm sure he's just dying to meet me. Shh, Jimmy, they're coming this way. That's right, governor. Superman is going to uncover and light our new globe. It will be magnificent, seen from every point of the city. Mighty good publicity, eh, Morgan? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Once each hour, the Daily Planet letters will orbit the globe. A unifying symbol, I like to think. Something wrong, Clark? You're positively pale. Oh, I must have eaten too much, Jimmy. I feel sick. Eaten too much? I haven't seen you take a bite all evening. I think I'd better go lie down for just a while to make sure. See you, uh, perhaps, uh, later on. What a weakling. <laughs> all this fresh air probably got to him. But around the corner and out of sight, Clark Kent dons his Superman suit and heads for the Arctic Fortress of Solitude to fetch three solar receptors to light up the planet's new globe. I'm getting tired of making excuses so I can get away as Clark Kent and show up as Superman. But I do have to keep my identity secret. Besides, being Kent is one of the all-too-few chances I get to relax. It's like taking off my boots. All I ever want to do as Superman is simply carry on with my job. Oh, and uh, speaking of jobs, I better get on with mine and get these solar receptors fixed onto the globe. But back in Metropolis, on the roof of the Daily Globe... It's 11 o'clock, and Superman has promised to light our globe. Now keep your eyes peeled, everyone. This is what we've been waiting for. Wish Clark would get back. He's going to miss everything. Suddenly... Oh, oh, what is it? Oh, Superman's down again. Well done, well Superman. I don't know. Great balls of fire. The light is blinding. What's Superman doing? And look, look. It's so bright, it's terrifying. It's like daylight. Look, it's fading down now. The great thunder, it's amazing. It's magnificent, Mr. Edge. Of course, Superman and... <laughs> and I arranged this little show. <laughs> Congratulations, Morgan. Well done. But across the way, a powerful figure crouches in the darkness, watching with deep, bitter eyes. Celebrate, you dolts. But that light signals the end of Metropolis. For now, at the eleventh hour, neutron strikes. Within my fists pulses the power of a neutron bomb. And it's high time to let their terrible powers be unleashed. Hurry to me, Superman! It's time for us to battle! The fate of Metropolis will be decided by its outcome! I was dreading this, hoping against hope he wouldn't take advantage of this anniversary celebration. With the governor here and everyone else so close, he could create total disaster. Which means I've got to end this battle even before it's begun. There he is. A blast of super breath should do the trick. My useless tactic, Superman. Keeping me off balance won't stop me using my powers. Do you feel that, Superman? Can you tell how strong I'm becoming? That 
nearly had the force of ten hydrogen bombs, and my power is still growing! My body has become an ever-increasing nuclear chain reaction. In time, man of steel, I shall be able to decimate the world! Nothing will be able to stop me, Superman! Not even you! Hey, what's he doing? Because of you, Superman, I'm being converted into pure energy! And as you know, energy can never be destroyed! Ah, his power! It's blasting me off balance! If I can't stand, if I can't regain my balance, I won't be able to fight back! He can keep using me like a human battering ram! I'd be helpless to stop him. I must stop him before the governor and all those others are hurt. He's blowing me back. Gotta find a way to stop being smashed about. Gotta grab hold of something. Ground's getting harder. I'm managing to slow down. A few more seconds is all it'll take. I have only one more chance at him, and I've got to make the most of it! And with incredible speed, Superman rockets forward, his face grim, set, and determined, while a defiant Neutron stands ready and strong. Great whale! He's turning into pure energy! You did it, Superman! Did what I expected! By being defeated, I really won! I knew I could never physically destroy you, Superman, but if I wanted revenge, I could! I could mentally tear you apart. And every single human being in Metropolis can hear me say this. And there's more. Somewhere in this city, I planted a deadly neutron bomb. When you let the Daily Planet globe, you unknowingly activated it. Unless you find and stop it in time, Superman, that bomb will explode in one hour! the rub, isn't it? It could be anywhere, you know. Anywhere on this planet. Why are you doing this, Neutron? Because only you and I shall survive the explosion, that's why. And you shall spend the rest of your life knowing you activated the bomb. That you were the man that murdered Metropolis. You're crazy, Neutron. You'd decimate an entire city just to get back at me? I'd even destroy the planet itself to gain my vengeance! And below, in the city of Metropolis... Help us, Superman! He'll find that bomb, Mr. Edge. He's got to. If anyone can, Lois, Superman will. I hope and pray. You might succeed, Superman, but frankly, I wouldn't count on it. This doesn't seem to make sense. He says he planted a bomb, but how? And when? I fought him less than 24 hours ago. He couldn't have had time to build a device that complex. Yet why lie about it? Do I dare take a risk that it is a lie? No. I've got to assume there is a device somewhere, and I've got to act as fast as I can. Hello? What's that down there on that railway bridge? I must go in closer and look. There are two bombs. One must be a decoy. I'll have a look at the lower one first. Ah, it's a dummy. That means the other one might be the real thing. Hello? What's that? It's a train. And the other bomb is between the tracks. The train won't touch it, but... But I shall have to let it pass before I can have a proper look at the bomb. Hurry up. Hurry up. At last. Now to see if this bomb... You've located your first bomb, I see. Excellent, Superman. But is it real? <laughs> or are you merely wasting your time while Metropolis has less than 40 minutes to live? He's trying to goad me. It is a decoy. Off we go again. That looks like a bomb on that old building site. Now, another phony. Why didn't I check it out with my telescopic vision instead of rushing down here like a fool? <laughs> Only 20 minutes, Superman! Only 20 minutes! That 
does it, Neutron. Shut up. I'll find that bomb and make you eat it. I must search logically. Calm down. Making threats is not my style. I must keep going. There's another bomb in that playground, but it's shielded with lead. Can't tell if this one's real until I check it out. Oh, but there's kids playing around it. I've got to get those kids away. Run, kids! Great Krypton, it started ticking. That means I've only got seconds. No time to be gentle. A draft of super breath will safely move them out of the way. While I dismantle this... Hey! It stopped ticking! What's going on? It's exploded. But this isn't a neutron explosion. It's just a smoke bomb. Hurry! You're behind schedule, Superman! You'll never save Metropolis at this rate! <laughs> Your time is running out, Superman, very, very quickly. But I will be merciful. And as you are so slow of thought, I will give you a little clue to ponder on, old man of tin. Insults will not detain me, Neutron. Indeed, one day you'll regret those words. I doubt your ability to give a clue. You don't have the intelligence to think up anything of sense. <laughs> Superman, you must make your own decision about my capabilities, but I will give you the clue, and you can decide for yourself. The bomb is in a safe place. <laughs> you can bank on that. <laughs> safe? Bank? I doubt his sincerity, but I can't afford to risk ignoring him. I must search through every bank in Metropolis, and there must be 50 of them at least. Even if I use my X-ray vision to see a bomb in one of the vaults, I shall have to check it out, as vaults are lined with lead. And Superman, now anxious and angry, swoops to every bank in the city looking into every vault, but nothing. Did you really believe I would give you help? That I have forgotten the help that was refused to me on the roof of that nuclear reactor? No, Superman, never! But you have wasted more precious time! Just ten minutes left now, Man of Steel! I must think this through. He said he wanted me to feel guilt. He even said I activated the bomb with solar power. Five minutes, Superman! I've been searching all over the city, and hey, I finally figured it out. Four minutes, Superman! It's been right under my nose. Up and away! He hid the bomb in the Daily Planet globe. And when I activated the globe, I also started the bomb. Well, here's the globe. But I don't see the bomb anywhere. I can't have been wrong, can I? And there's no time to search anywhere else. Great Krypton, I'm not wrong. He used his neutron powers to turn the entire globe into a bomb. You couldn't have found it, Superman. <laughs> I must get rid of the entire globe itself. <laughs> Put that globe down, Superman! Put it down, you hear me? You can't save Metropolis! I must have my revenge! You only needed a power source to explode the bomb, and I gave it to you. And there's only seconds left before it... Put it down, Superman! Put it down! And with two seconds left, Superman, using his muscles, which are the mightiest on Earth, throws the entire globe into the velvet darkness. Where... There is a devastating blast of searing light which pulsates deep into the furthest reaches of space before forever fading from view. But on Earth, the menace is still not over. sent the globe hurtling through Neutron's dome, it virtually unglued him. He's raining down as deadly neutron radiation, which could destroy half the city. If I let him, that is. And I have no intention of letting that happen. I should be able to stop him by circling him at super speed and create a centripetal force to push his atoms together. 
until his body reforms. For better or worse, I did it, Superman. He still has his powers, but if I figured correctly... He's passed out, just as I had hoped. All his atomic form shifting created too much of a strain. The danger is over, and I'll construct a special cell that even Neutron can't break through. Now I must go back to the Daily Planet. There's one other thing I must take care of. It's over. I should be happy about it, but I'm not. You're crazy. The city's been saved. I know, Mr. Edge. But to save the city, Superman had to destroy the new planet globe. We're right back where we started from. Hold it. Look. Something's coming up there. I can't make it out. What is it? I'm not certain, Morgan, but I've got a strong hunch. It's a new globe. Superman must have built another one. He's done it again. What a Superman. Hello, Clark. Where you been? Well, I, I uh, took a little nap. Um, did I uh, miss something? Did you miss something? Clark, you miss everything. Yes, Clark, look up there. Oh, yeah, so we got the globe back. <laughs> Big deal. Yeah, let's get on with the party. Oh, Clark Kent. Throughout the party that follows, Clark Kent faces the usual jibes from his colleagues with good humor. Yet he cannot help but think to himself, what became of the crazed, vengeful Neutron? Now safely locked away, might he not one day escape? And what then? And what if Metropolis had been destroyed? Could he have faced the loss of so many lives caused solely by his failure to find the bomb? Later, as he walks home through the nighttime streets, he looks up. High above, the daily planet globe slowly circles, its message shining far and wide. And he knows that good will always triumph over evil in the end. And he will be there fighting for right with all the powers of Superman. <laughs> <laughs>